I remember my first words. It was something like Gaga, Gugu, Mama. Afterwards, I remember the spelling books, the first letters which I learned how to write, and then the whole words that occupied more of the page than was needed. Sometime at the end of the first grade, it became obvious that I had a hell of a time with Cyrillic letters and handwriting. My mother was upset about the B in my report card, but it was all the same to me. In the end, that grade was just another marking on the paper that was filled with other markings. They were surrounded by neatly written letters, forming words, but still I had not given much attention to any of it. It all seemed utterly meaningless. A lot of time passed before I realized the essence of writing. Some random but decent woman once told me that letters are there only so we could write up our thoughts. Later on, a different woman had confirmed in a much simpler fashion that thoughts are only thoughts, while imagination is something entirely different. She told me that two people can write the same thought in an identical way, while imagination is the thing that separates us, hence that each imagination is written with different letters. Since that moment, the imaginations of different people had gone through my hands, and my handwriting improved in the meantime. The thought that some unknown person had left at least a small part of himself on the paper excited me. His imagination took shape in the form of words that interconnected into shorter or longer sentences, and I finally realized the essence of writing, and with it, why people have a desire to write. The name of my imagination is Water's Edge. Other aspects of my imagination have some other, still untitled names. While Water's Edge is the name of that imagination, I decided to give away. I know it sounds arrogant and pretentious, maybe even childish, because who am I to even think that my imagination might be interesting to other people? It truly sounds stupid, but somehow, I see the point of that narrative exactly in that fact. Word by word, paragraph by paragraph, Water's Edge unravels my imagination that is sometimes immature, sometimes sad, and often sarcastic. There is also love, social paradox, and many, many people who drank themselves blind in random bars. My voice is often silent. It is being covered by endless layers of voices of some people who are not real. I learned to love both them and their voices, which multiplied with the speed of my imagination. In some sense, I consider those people to be more real than you who are standing in flesh and blood in front of my nose right now. I of course know this is to be untrue, but I have fallen so much in love with those bastards of my imagination that I never want them to disappear. Paper puts up with those people, their apartments and cities, all while I hang out with them. The edge of that water is an imaginary border I'm often afraid of crossing. It is not easy to delve into a place where truths are revealed. Water's edge is the name of my imagination and I'm glad to be able to hold it in my arms.